super, super, super funny video. Hey, what's going on, sports fans? And all you other type of fans. You know, you got NASCAR fans, which, let's face it, is definitely not a sport. And then you have ceiling fans. So yeah, then you got in one over here, you have sports fans. And then over here, in a weird container, you have ceiling fans and NASCAR fans. You know, they kind of fit in the same mold because they seem to think that going round and around and around in a circle is insanely entertaining and I don't freaking get it. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, go number 22, drive in that circle, drive in that circle. No, I'm just kidding, I love NASCAR. But speaking of great sporting events, we're in football season, all right, finally it's here. And you know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm just gonna watch some stupid YouTube videos instead because I don't really find football interesting either. I guess I'm just one of those guys that can watch the highlight reel and see the good like 32 seconds of a game and I can feel good about that. I don't have to watch all the in-between and all the downtime. Ah, it's just not my thing, I guess. But you know what? But you know what, I think I understand the reason why so many guys like football to the extremes that they do. It's an escape. Because how many times have you seen someone watching a football game? They're not watching a football game. Why? Because they're zonked out. What happened? What happened? I love football. I love it. Go team. No, I'm just kidding. I love football. But that does bring me to a very good point. As a professional wrestler, bodybuilder, and snookler, and for those of you who don't know what snookling is, it's kind of like scuba diving mixed with snorkeling, except for without the snorkel or the scuba gear. Instead, you just get a knife and just kind of flail around in the ocean and hope that a shark attacks you so you can stab it in the eye. It's very popular among Scottish tribes and it's starting to catch on here. But like I was saying, I get a lot of dumb questions like, who does your hair? I do. Who cuts your hair? I do. Is it just me or does your forehead seem abnormally large? It's just you. And it's because I have an abnormally large brain. But seriously, sometimes in life, having the right answer to a stupid question can make all the difference between success and failure. It's like when you're at a job interview and they ask you that stupid question, where do you want to be five years from now? And in your head, you're thinking, what the crap, dude? I just want to bust some tables. Let me clean some tables off. Let's not get into a five year plan here. But if you really want the job, you gotta tell them, well, I really see myself still working for the company and I just really wanna do a great job for you. Yeah, that's your plan. But you do what you gotta do in that situation to land that big job so you can prove to the entire world that you can bust tables like no one else. Sorry, that story hits a little close to home for me. You know, like what if you're an astronaut and it's like, hey, is it righty tighty or is it lefty loosey? Righty tighty. And then the next thing you know, your satellite's falling out of space and it lands in the ocean somewhere. Yeah, nice job, NASA. I'm just kidding, I like NASA. I don't think they invest in stupid stuff at all. No, I don't. So it's time for your weekly challenge. Even though this is the first week I've even given you a challenge, I challenge you to answer the next stupid question you get with a witty and clever answer, despite the consequences. I wash your face. So until next time, all of you wide variety of fans, ignore the green screen behind me because I have no idea what I'm doing with it yet. <laughs>